A blessed day to you all my sports to the bone people Welcome back to the channel Thank you all for tuning in Alright, so let's dive straight into it Now, last night, the Guyana Amazon Warriors They were able to secure another victory Therefore qualifying for the playoffs of CPL 2024 now, the Antigua and Barbuda Falcons, they were on the losing side once again. I tell you, my adopted team, not doing too well at all. So we're going to go through that scorecard, plus the Guyana Amazon Warriors fans, they will be happy to hear that as they go into qualifiers, they, their uh, top scorer from last year will be returning to the team. So I'll give you some more info on that. Plus, um, we're going to talk a little bit about what's next for West Indies. Yes, we are set to take on England um, a little after the, the CPL. So, i uh, going to talk a little bit about that. Just give a listening ear until the end. And let me know what you all think in the comment section as per usual. Alright, so last night's game was a low scoring one. The Guyana Amazon Warriors once again batting first. And, you know, they were not able to get, uh, you know, 150 or over. They got 135 for 7. You know, um, their bowlers once again making sure that they got across the line. So 135 for 7. Moin Ali was the man that stood in the middle last night for them. Stood in the gap, right? He did well with the bat and he also came back with the ball. To ensure that they got across the line. Now, for the Guyana Amazon Warriors, they continue to experiment at the top of the order in terms of openers. Um, Raymond Reefer and Azam Khan, um, you know, they went out there. Raymond Reefer made five from 17. Yes, five from 17 in the power play. Azam Khan, he got off to a good little start and then he got out 29 from 24 with two sixes and one four. Goodikish Moti batting at number three, you know, trying to keep that left and right hand combination going. He fell for eight. She Hope 15 from 19. So another um, rough time there for She Hope. Shimran Hetmaya, he went in and he decided that he was going to take on the bowling. Right? He got uh, two sixes on his way to 13 before he was removed by Hayden Walsh Jr. going for another boundary. Uh, Moen Ali, he actually got run out for 42, 42 from 33, 3 fours and 3 sixes. So while wickets were falling, Moen Ali, you know, he stayed there and he played a patient knock. It was in the back end of his innings that he started and um, was able to, to, to get some boundaries. Romario Shepard came in, he got 10 from 6. Um, Kimo Paul, 9 from 5, not out. Um, Pretorius didn't score. He was left not out also. No bowling for the Antigua and Barbuda Falcons. Mohamed Amir, his four overs went for 15 runs. Yes, four overs for 15. Um, he picked up two wickets. So some good bowling there from uh, Mohamed Amir. Chris Green, four overs, 22 runs. Economical. Hayden Walsh Jr., four overs, um, four overs, 15 runs, one wicket. So very good to see Hayden Walsh um, there, uh, four overs, 15 runs. You understand? Um, he even actually he even got a maiden in there, no, my people. Yeah, man, good to see Hayden Walsh there getting um, some economical overs and also picking up the wicket of, um, I think it was Hetmeyer. Iman Wazim's four overs went for 39 runs. He picked up two wickets. Fabian Allen had one over for 14 runs. Hassan Khan won for 50, um, well, he had one over 15 runs, one wicket. Joshua James is uh, two overs went for 13 runs. So that's how the batting went for the um, Guyana Amazon Warriors and the bowling for the Antigua and Barbuda Falcons. Now, when it was time for the Antigua and Barbuda Falcons to chase, Justin Greaves and Brandon King, they went out there and, you know, they found the going tough. You know, Brandon King... Once again, failing to spark, he was removed for three, having faced 11 deliveries. So, um, not a tough time there for Brandon King. Justin Greaves, five from six. Kofi James, you know, he got a couple of boundaries 
in but it wasn't enough at all he made 27 from 23 with three fours and one six hassan khan the man who you know he did pretty well for them a couple um i think in the last game but you know he went for 10 of 12 iman was him seven from 19 jamar hamilton 12 from 11 chris green runner ball 17 um with one four fabian allen didn't trouble the score joshua james got 15 from six uh, Hayden Walsh Jr. was left not out on two. Mohamed Amir was dismissed without scoring. So they were bowled out for 108, chasing 135. So the Ghana Amazon Warriors winning that game by 27 runs there. And, you know, um, good to see good to see them winning that game, you know, and, and getting qualified. Bowling for them, Goody Kishmoti, four overs, 24 runs, one wicket. Pretorius, 2.5 overs, nine runs, three wickets. Imran Tahir, four overs, 40 runs, two wickets. So he went for some runs there. Romario Shepard, one over, five, run, five runs. Uh, Moin Ali, four overs, um, you know, one made nine uh, runs and three wickets. So Moin Ali doing pretty well there. Shamar Joseph, three overs, 14 runs, one wicket. Good to see Shamar Joseph in another game, bowling with pace, picking up, wicket, uh, picking up a wicket and not giving away too many runs. So... You know, shout out to the Ghana Amazon Warriors um, players and shout out to the fans there. So, victory for them. And talking about Ghana Amazon Warriors, while I was watching the game last night, you know, I heard the commentators saying that Saib um, Ayub, the Pakistan player there, that, uh, you know, he was a top scorer for them last year, um, opening the innings. He's set to return, you understand? Um, I think it was two days ago, he actually scored 150 in a 50-over in a, in a game there. So, you know, um, I think he has like one or two more games to play and then he will be hopping on a flight back, um, you know, hopping on a flight to the Caribbean. So the Amazon Warriors fans will be happy about that. You know, they have been chopping and changes, changing and trying to find a, 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 a good opening partnership. But... You know, he will be returning. All right, just before we go, I just wanted to remind you of what's next for the West Indies white ball team. So we are set to take on England. Um, yeah, man, England in uh, a couple of T20s and ODIs, right? So the ODIs, we have three ODIs and um, five T20s, you know, three ODIs and five T20s. So a very busy rest of the close to the end of the year for us so the first odi will be played on the 31st of uh, um, october so on the 31st of october we have the first one the second one will be on the second of november the third one will be on the 6th of november and then you know for the t20s uh we have the first one on the 9th of november then the 10th of november the 14th of november we'll have the third one the fourth one will be on the 16th of november and the fifth one will be on the 17th of november so you know good to see that the, the the west indies will be you know able to play some um white ball cricket you know the our t20 team is doing pretty well you know but i am hoping that we'll be able to win a couple of, <laughs> at least we know one of them odi games you know we, we haven't we're not doing too well where odi cricket is concerned and you know the, we are going to be home you know we are going to be at home so it's going to be very interesting to see how the guys will go. Going to leave this one right here for now. We'll touch base again later on. Big up.